Hello everyone. I am Faith Njeringure and I'll be taking you three, through this uh, unit, Media Marketing, DJL 2103, Phil Much Welcomed. And uh, in our today's uh, lecture, we'll be looking at uh, media marketing and trying to, uh, to understand or even do a discussion on uh, uh, media marketing, have an overview of what is uh, media marketing, different components of media marketing, as well as uh, the products that can be marketed via different uh, channels of communication, as well as try to categorize these uh, products. We'll also be discussing uh, the, segment, the segmentation, how we can segment uh, different audiences uh, together with uh, positioning. Uh, welcome and uh, move uh, together with uh, me. Uh, in our introduction, we'll be looking at uh, different terms uh, that we'll be coming across in our lecture. And uh, we'll be defining what is uh, media marketing and also media marketing. And uh, media, uh, med in media, you find that uh, media are channels of communication or different uh, channels that are used for the purposes of transmission. And uh, the media uh, touches on the print, there is also the broadcast, there is also the new media and also the outdoor media. And uh, marketing is just a process of providing information using different uh, channels of communication. You're providing on information that touches on the product, touching on the price, touching on the promotion, and also touching on the, the place where you can get that product. It's true customers and also target a market wants to get the information about the product, which kind of uh, product are you marketing. Also, apart from that, they want to get information about the price. How much are you selling a given product? Apart from that, they want to get information about uh, the place. Where can, I, can they get this product? And also apart from that, uh, the promotion uh, in terms of the techniques that you're trying to use for the purposes of uh, convincing the customers to buy the product. Are you giving them free delivery services? Are you sub subsidizing the cost of the product? Uh, are you allowing uh, the customers uh, to serve themselves? And these are some of the information uh, that are shared uh, via different channels of uh, communication. And uh, with the media marketing, therefore, it's a process of designing, communicating, delivering, and also exchanging offerings that have value to customers, clients, stakeholders and the society at large in the media industry. And therefore, um, media marketing is just a process of uh, designing. You design uh, uh, marketing campaigns. Also, apart from that, uh, the, the, whatever you have designed is uh, communicated uh, and also giving information on the delivering of uh, products and also exchanging how these uh, products can be exchanged. Is it uh, through... Uh, use of money or is it uh, in terms of a uh, time that you will give in terms of a given action and therefore that is media marketing and now we will look at the components of marketing and there are different uh, components of marketing and number one is the needs wants and demands we as human beings, we have a different uh, needs. And borrowing from the Maslow's hierarchy of needs, you'll find that uh, we have different needs that touches on physical needs, that touches on uh, belonging and security. And in terms of uh, needs, is uh, things that we require to survive. And also the wants and the demand. Like we have physical needs of food, clothing, warmth, safety, social needs, and also the the needs of uh, affection and therefore you find that uh, these needs uh, were not invented by marketers but they are basic part of human beings and therefore during marketing this is what our marketers tend uh, 
to look at. They really need, they really want to satisfy the needs of the customers and therefore they look at uh, different needs that the customers have. Is it the, the need of uh, the physical needs? Is it the need of security? Is it the need of belonging, love and belonging? And therefore these are the needs that uh, they'll be looking at whenever they are marketing using different uh, channels of uh, communication. There is also another component of um, marketing and that is the product and services and uh, people satisfy their needs with the different products and uh, services and the products can be the products that are both tangible and services are the intangible products or even goods and you find that a product is anything that can be offered to satisfy the needs of a customer and uh, they can be either uh, tangible goods and products and uh, these tangible goods in involve goods like soaps, uh, toothbrushes, uh, toothpaste and in terms of services they are intangible activities or even benefits that are offered uh, to different uh, people or different customers. When you walk into a salon, services are given to you. When you walk into a bank, these are services that are given to you. In uh, insurance companies, these are services that are offered to the customers. Uh, to when uh, you walk to the courts, uh, there are services that are given by lawyers, uh, doctors, mechanics, they just offer services. And therefore, in terms of uh, marketing, you must market a product or even a service. The product that you're trying to market uh, or the information that you're giving uh, concerning a given product can touch on uh, the services and also the, t the tangible the tangible products and also the products that are not tangible. And uh, you find that uh, uh, in terms of uh, products, products can include uh, number one, goods. And uh, example of goods, there is a soap, television, uh, the television uh, set, the mobile headsets. These are just goods. There is also services like haircuts, financial planning, and other products offered by accounts, doctors, patients, musicians. Also, there is a persons, an example of marathon winners, the football stars and players, the musicians. These are persons. You can even advertise or even market uh, persons. Also, there is uh, places, for example, a city like Masai Mara, a place uh, like uh, Kinangop. You can just uh, also market places and to proceed there is also experiences you can also uh, market experiences like hiking uh, Mount Longonot or even uh, Kilimambogo you can as well market organizations like Red Cross National Bank you can as well market events like Olympics World Cup these are just events you can as well uh, market information and uh, with information is knowledge created and disseminated by teaching institutions and also publication by media. There is also the ideas. You can even market an idea on how to bake a cake, on how to cook, on how to, to even uh, prepare some uh, uh, salads. You are just uh, sharing some ideas and therefore you can even market ideas. Also... Uh, these are just types of uh, goods or different uh, goods and you find that um, marketing occurs when uh, people decide to satisfy needs once uh, through exchange and uh, exchange transactions and uh, relationships uh, is also another component of marketing because uh, in terms of marketing, you find that as you market, you're marketing a product to people. And at the end of it all, when they'll come to purchase the product or even to give their time or even to, give, uh, their, uh, to do a given uh, action, you find that there must be that exchange and there must be that transaction. And also the relationship is a key element. And you find that exchange is that, that uh, practice or act of 
obtaining a desired effect from someone by offering something in return. Maybe I want to buy a phone, a phone that has been marketed via the television. And if I go to the dealer or even the manufacturer, for me to get the phone, I'll be required maybe to give some money. And that's the exchange, the transaction. And uh, you find that uh, exchange allows uh, society to produce more than it would with any alternative system where else exchange is the core concept of marketing a transaction also in a marketing unit is a marketing unit of measurement you can do some transaction or even you can do some exchange and you find that just beyond creating short-term transactions marketer need marketers need also to to have or to build a long term relationship with the customers or the people that you have in mind they will buy your product as much as you're transacting as much as uh, there is an exchange you find that uh, as a marketer you have to maintain a good uh, relationship with the with the customers and a relationship is uh, valued for the purposes of uh, incrementing sales and for the purposes of influencing the masses with the information that you are airing to them about the product also uh, th there is also another component of marketing and that's the market uh, you are not just passing the information uh, to the air or you're not just uh, uh, channeling your information uh, blindly, you're channeling your information to people or to the target market. And these are the markets because the information will be received uh, by different people in the market. And these can touch on the buyers, the buyers who are there and also the potential buyers who may end up buying their product. And these are, this is the market. These are just the components of uh, marketing. And uh, to proceed with, we'll look at the market segmentation. You find for you to reach uh, the customers or for you to ensure that the information, the marketing information or the information concerning a product, uh, the place where people can get the product, also the promotion and the price, you must do some market segmentation. You must understand uh, who will be the recipient of this information. And apart from the receiving this information, who will end up buying the product and therefore market segmentation it's just a process of uh, dividing a market uh, into different groups into subgroups or into different uh, distinct groups for the purposes of effective communication or for the purposes of effective marketing and uh, you'll find that there are different levels of marketing uh, and uh, whenever there is a uh, complete marketing you find that uh, you uh, complete segmentation you have done micro marketing uh, this is a uh, dividing your your market or people into different groups the micro groups also the niche marketing and uh, segment uh, marketing and also mass marketing whenever there is mass marketing there is no segmentation because you you don't have actual individuals in mind or you don't have specific people that you want to acquire the information about a product when you just segment a market or any howly there is a there is a just a little bit of a segmentation also with the niche and uh, micro marketing you find that uh, uh, there is a complete segmentation and therefore these are just levels of uh, segmentation and now we will look at uh, uh, the variables that you can use to segment uh, your marketing. Remember, you want to get your product uh, in the market, or you really want to get some, the, to, some information to be directed to different people who will end up buying the product, and you really want these uh, people to understand uh, your product very well in terms of the characteristics, in terms of the uses, in terms of the benefits, maybe that you have a product like a, a Jiko or Koa, even you, or you, even you have a product like a phone, and you really want uh, the target market or people to understand about the features of the phone in terms of the specification, in terms of the speed, in terms of the RAM and the, the camera.
camera qualities. Remember, uh, this information for it uh, to be successful, there must be that segmentation. You're trying to divide your group into, to divide people into distinct groups. And I'll proceed to the variables that you'll use to segment uh, your market. And number one is the geographic uh, segmentation uh, variables. And uh, you, you segment uh, people or you segment them, target market based on the vicinity or the locations. Uh, and uh, when you're mentioning the geographic segmentation variables, it's all about uh, trying to divide your, your target market in terms of the location, where they live or the vicinity, where they live. And uh, you can look at the city or the metro size. Maybe you are targeting people in Nairobi city. Maybe you are targeting people in Kisumu city, Mombasa city, cities and also the metro size. At the moment we are talking at the Nairobi metropolitan. Maybe you can be even uh, targeting people in the Nairobi metropolitan or any other metropolitan, the metro size or even the city. As well, uh, you can uh, segment our uh, people based on the neighborhood. Maybe you are in Nairobi County, you can uh, also reach people who are in the neighborhood. And there are different counties that are in the neighborhood, like Kiambu County, Machakos. These are just some of the counties that are in the neighborhood, and therefore you can segment based on the neighborhood. To proceed, there is also the world region or even the country. You may end up even uh, segmenting your market based on the, uh, the region, like uh, count country or even the world region maybe you are targeting the whole world like uh, the the advert that is always in the international television on wildlife also country maybe you are targeting the kenyan uh, people or the people from the ugandan uh, the ugandans or even you are targeting people from another country you, therefore you can segment based on the country and also the world region. There is also the counties. Nowadays we have counties. You may try to reach segment or even uh, divide your target market based on the county. Maybe you want to reach people in Mombasa County, Meru County, Machakos. Uh, these are counties. Also you may reach people based on the state. And uh, the state uh, is like a country. And therefore you can uh, reach people uh, in a given state. Uh, to proceed with, there is another variable on how you can segment uh, your market. And uh, this is the demographic segmentation uh, variable. There is the age. Uh, you can uh, segment uh, based on the age. There are children, there are youths, there are also older people, and you may look at uh, the age. In terms of gender, you may segment based on the gender. There is the female gender, and there is the male gender. Also, the income, you find that also people are segmented uh, based on the whatever they earn, there are those who may be earning uh, maybe below the taxable amount and others you may segment based on that. Also there is the race and also occupation, you may segment based on their occupation. And in terms of occupation, there are those who work in the hospitals as doctors, they are lawyers, they are teachers, and you may segment based on their occupation. Also the level of education, they are those... Um, who went up to primary school, there are those who went up to high school, others up to uh, university level or um, even postgraduate studies, and you may segment based on the level of education and also religion. And you find that in different countries or even in our country, we have a different uh, religion. They are Christians, they are Muslims, they are Hindus, and therefore you may be having even products uh, that are meant uh, to fit the needs of the Christians or even the Muslims. And therefore, when uh, uh, you are segmenting, you can segment uh, based on the religion. Also, the generation. There are different uh, types of uh, generation. There are millennials. There is Generation X. There is the early bloomers. And you can uh, uh, segment based on the generation. And uh, to proceed with this, just uh, an example of a picture or an illustration that has been uh, used to bring out segmentation. 
at some point uh, in different uh, products or even in different places, uh, we have seen such illustration. Uh, and you find such illustration are uh, used uh, to bring out the aspect of segmentation. And uh, with this, you're able to know this is the fe female gender and this is the male gender. And you find these are just some of the signs that are used to bring out uh, the 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 gender variable or to show the differences in terms of uh, segmentation. Also, there is uh, another illustration and uh, it comes with a question, what type of demographic segmentation is uh, reflected by these uh, ad? And uh, by, the look, uh, by looking at the illustration or the picture, you can see that there is a kid or a child who is in the picture. And through that, you are able to even understand that they have used the demographic uh, segmentation. And uh, with demographic, they have uh, used their age uh, to segment. And therefore, the products that are being marketed, they are for their children or their kids. And uh, we will proceed with another variable of, uh, that can be used to segment, and that is the psychographic uh, segmentation variable. And uh, with the psychographic segmentation variable is where you divide your market based on their uh, social class, their uh, lifestyle, and also personality characteristics. In uh, different countries or even uh, in uh, Kenyan context, you find we are from, we have different social classes. We have those who are of high class, middle class, and even low class. And also in terms of lifestyles, we all have different lifestyles based on our needs and our wants. Also personality characteristics. There are those that are introverts and therefore with the introverts, they'll go for different uh, products. There are the extroverts, they'll go for different uh, products. There are those who are ambiverts, they'll go for different products because this brings out the personality characteristics and there are several questions that are here what does consumer like or dislike and you find that based on the our social class and also our lifestyle and also our personality characteristics we have likes and dislikes like with the introverts they like being indoors and therefore they may even end up going for the products that will suit their personalities Maybe they want uh, to spend their time watching. Maybe they want to spend their time doing video games or even um, playing games like Scrabble. And therefore, they'll go for the product that fits their personalities and also their lifestyles and uh, social class. Also, there is another question. What are consumers' activities, opinions, and interests? And you find based on the social class, the lifestyle, and personalities, different consumers tend to go for different activities, and they have different opinions and also interests. Activities like going to gym, this is a matter of lifestyle and also personality characteristics. There is no, you'll find an introvert in an area that is uh, too noisy or full of fun. And therefore, you can uh, use uh, questions like the what cons consumers' activities are, opinions, and also interests as you segment based on the psychographic to proceed uh, to proceed uh, with there is the behavioral segmentation variables and uh, with behavioral segmentation variables you find this is where you segment based on people's behaviors and uh, attributes and uh, there is an illustration and uh, there is an illustration here and uh, you find that uh, this is based on uh, different uh, behaviors. And uh, there is a statement, benefits are characteristics or attributes of a product that consumers seek or consider important. And uh, with the benefits, in terms of behavioral segmentation, people will go for products that benefit them as far as behavior is uh, concerned. And you can see a computer here, and uh, a computer has different uh, benefits. And therefore, you find that uh, there is a graphic designer who wants to purchase a computer, and there is also a student who wants to purchase a computer.
cons uh, uh, computer. And therefore, when they are purchasing the computer, they all have wants that are different. Dif they have similar wants, but they have different needs. The graphic designer want to use the computer for the purposes of designing. A student want to use it for the purposes of assignment. And therefore, they have different needs, but similar ones. And therefore, they will go for the computer even as far as a specific specifications are concerned in terms of the benefit they'll go for a computer that tend to suit them and therefore in terms of behavioral segmentation variables uh, you look at the benefits and uh, different consumers will look for products that tend uh, to suit their need and uh, the products that they can use based on the benefits that they get after using the product also to proceed uh, you find in terms of uh, in terms of uh, the behavioral segmentation you find that there is also the occasion you find buyers can be grouped according to the occasion when they get the idea to buy or actually make the uh, purchase look at a very good example like during valentine's uh, people tend to buy flowers uh, to gift their uh, significant others but you'll never find in a normal day people selling flowers all over and therefore even marketing can uh, can be segmented in terms of the occasion you can uh, market a product during a given occasion or even a given season and we have seen it even during the festivities there are products that are marketed during those seasons even uh, when st the student or pupils are going back to school you'll find butter uh, marketing their product you'll find a different supermarkets marketing the stationaries and that's why we are saying you look at the occasion also the user status uh, the status of the user the user rate how much uh, consumers use the product and also the loyalty status how the consumers value and uh, find the product uh, useful and also the readiness stage are even consumers are ready to use a product like at this moment we are all using masks and everyone is ready to use masks and sanitizers and therefore it's a very nice stage even to market such products that are touching on the hygiene and the control of uh, the pandemic also the attributes toward the the attitude towards the product attitude matters a lot and people tend to buy product based on the attitude that they have and therefore you can look at the attitude attitude people have toward their product uh, to proceed with their requirements for effective uh, segmentation and uh, for segmentation to be effective there is number one the measurable remember the a segment must be measurable these are a group that you can really measure you can say these are youths these are millennials these are christians these are muslim measurable the size and also the purchasing power and the profile of the segment it is it can be measured you can really measure the size you can really measure the purchasing power as you try to segment also accessible can they be reached out and uh, served uh, these youths uh, can you reach these youths can you really reach these uh, christians are they accessible also the substantial large and profitable enough to serve and that's true you find that uh, if uh, if you target uh, christians with the bible or even you target muslims with the quran you find that uh, in terms of segmentation they must be substantial such that they are large enough uh, to to serve and also large enough to to sell the product and also large enough to give this information also differentiable you are able to respond to them differently with the different messages pertaining our product and also actionable effective programs can be uh, developed
Now to proceed with, there is the positioning. We'll try to define the positioning. And this is just a photo of uh, uh, a baby that has been positioned. And uh, we will proceed and define what is uh, positioning. We can see that the, the kid is just positioned on a, on a foot. And uh, this is just what uh, positioning means. It is the place the products tend to occupy in the customer's minds uh, relative to the competitor's product. There is, a, there, is a, there is a place a given product occupies in our mind compared to the competitors. There are some customers who are very loyal to the Geisha as a product and the others who are loyal to Deto. And this uh, depends on the positioning, where the product lies in the customer's mind compared to the uh, to their competitors and uh, typically defined by consumers on the basis of the important attributes. The reason why people will go for that or, and not uh, sour, it's because of uh, how they have uh, defined uh, that or compared to sour and the, the place uh, uh, data occupies in their uh, mind. And uh, for successful positioning, always identify possible competitive advantages. And uh, with competitive advantages, is all about the uniqueness. And that's why marketers, when they are marketing their products, they'll bring out the, the attributes of a product. Eh, nunua hii sabuni ya data inatoa pimples, nunua hii sabuni ya data, ina, it kills germs. They try to bring out the competitive advantages and the uniqueness of a product. And they are primary elements of positioning that the marketers can use whenever they are positioning a product for it to occupy uh, the mind of uh, uh, given uh, the mind of the target market uh, compared to the competitor's product. They use elements like uh, pricing, and uh, in terms of uh, pricing, they will they'll bring out the item and uh, is uh, whether the item uh, is a luxury item and uh, somewhere they'll bring out. Uh, whether the item is a luxury item and somewhere in the middle, whether it's cheap, cheap or expensive. And uh, you find with uh, pricing, uh, even uh, different marketers, uh, they'll, uh, they'll give uh, different uh, characteristics or the features of a product. They'll give you the, the benefits of a product. And after giving the benefits of the product, they'll tell you regardless of these uh, benefits, this product is cheap. Uh, an example of, um, of, of like a product that is uh, usually used like uh, Colgate, they'll give you the importance or the benefits of uh, using a uh, Colgate, that it, it, takes, uh, it deals with the tooth sensitivity and it makes your tooth white, uh, you are the teeth white. And also, apart from that, you can get the product even at a minimal rate, such as 50 shillings. They are trying out to use uh, the pricing element, the cost of the product. Also, there is the quality. And uh, you find that total quality is much used and abused phrase, but is your product well produced? And that's why in terms of the quality, they are brought out uh, in terms of the, uh, the uniqueness or in terms of the features and the characteristics. And uh, you find that customers go for the product that they think have good qualities. In terms of qualities, uh, people really want to hear even about the warranties, the return policies. If, the prod if you find that the product is not of good quality, you can uh, return it. There is a return policy and also there, is, uh, there are warranties. Uh, you are guaranteed of warranties. And also apart from that, people want to go for a product that is of high quality quality. There is also the service. Uh, uh, do you have the added value of customer service and support? Is your product customized and 
personalized. Yeah, people want really to get information about the, the services that comes in once you buy the product. Also the distribution. Where can they obtain the product and through which channel will the, the product be directed or relayed uh, to the customers or to the target market even in terms of uh, positioning as part of positioning as you're marketing which uh, channel are you using to distribute this information and also apart from that how will even the target market obtain the, the product also the packaging you find that uh, people want to have products that are well packaged and you find that how a product is uh, wrapped or packaged really attract the attention of the uh, the consumers or the buyers and therefore packaging can be used as you try to to market your product so that uh, the buyers and the customers can uh, really fall in love or can uh, really be moved to buy the product. We will look at uh, different uh, levels of a uh, product. We have been talking of uh, what is a product and uh, we defined it uh, before and say that products uh, are goods and services. They can either be tangible and uh, intangible. And the services are intangible and the, they are the tangible products. And uh, you find that um, the consumers goes for the product to satisfy their needs or wants and demand. And uh, you find that there are different levels of a product. There is a basic uh, product, that's the first level. And you find that uh, when, uh, uh, when in this uh, level, a marketer needs uh, to concentrate on the core benefit of a basic product. They are really concentrating on the, uh, the core benefit, uh, the fundamental benefit or the main benefit of a product. And you find that uh, a core benefit is the fundamental service or benefit that the customers is really buying. For instance, if I'm to buy a detergent, I'm buying a detergent for the purposes of cleanliness or even for the purposes of doing some washing, some laundry. And this is the core benefit of our product. So uh, when the, the marketers are uh, even marketing, they tend to concentrate on the core benefit of a product. Also, there is the expected product, and uh, these are just the attributes uh, and conditions uh, that buyers normally expect when they purchase a product. You find that buyers and also the consumers have different expectations as they purchase a product. For example, how a good is packaged, how a product is packaged, how is this product uh, packaged? And um, in terms of uh, packaging and also in terms of uh, pricing, there is no way you can uh, market a product and uh, for it to be successful, pricing has to be reasonable for different customers. And that's why we go for different uh, products based on whatever we find to be reasonable. And therefore, customers have different expectations. And therefore, in terms of expectations, uh, they look for well-packaged good and also reasonably priced and uh, even availability. As much as you are, you are, you are marketing or you're doing some uh, marketing or even some promos. Uh, how will these uh, goods and products uh, reach the customers? Are they even readily available? Or they'll have to wait for the products to be delivered to them after some time? Or they have to walk from one county to the other looking for the same product? And these are the expectations of the customers. And therefore, as a marketer, kindly touch on uh, the expectations of the customers. Also, there is the potential product, and these uh, touches on the possible argumentations and also transformation a product might undergo in the future. And uh, we have seen a uh, transformation happening or even taking places in the different uh, businesses. Uh, we have seen even uh, some uh, companies uh, changing their uh, corporate colors, uh, like uh, Equity Bank. Uh, you can see they have changed their uh, corporate colors. They changed, they changed it as they were celebrating uh, different uh, milestones. And therefore, it's always good even to, to communicate the potential product. 
uh, you communicate to the consumers even earlier in advance that you are to change the corporate colors or you are to change uh, you, your name. Ab we have uh, another name for Rabanka that we knew. We are calling it ABSA. It's operating internationally. These are the potential or transformations and they ought to be communicated even during marketing to the to the customers you find that also transformations may take place even in terms of uh, the product maybe they really want to change uh, the uh, product uh, packaging apart from the packaging they have uh, they have a new product or even a new way of delivering their product maybe before they were uh, they distributing their product um, on one on one basis and now you can use uh, uh, some uh, other other mode of uh, transactions uh, and this is a uh, more of transformation and it is, should be touched when marketing also there is the uh, augmented uh, product and you find this is just uh, an improvement of uh, the product that makes uh, it possible for customers expectation to be increased for example we have uh, like a petroleum jelly or the lotions that we use and you find that uh, it is meant to retain the body moisture or the moisture of the body but in addition uh, it's for the purposes of beautification increased element when it comes to product also it should be mentioned apart from using data for the purposes of uh, bathing it can be used for the purposes of killing germs it can be used for the purposes of cleaning wounds uh, you are bringing out uh, the increased uh, the increased benefits of a uh, product apart from the core benefits there are also other benefits there are different classifications of uh, products and you find that uh, they can be categorized into two. And in terms of categorizing these uh, products, uh, you find that different scholars uh, in the field of marketing have tried to categorize a uh, product into two, business product and also consumer's uh, product. And you find that uh, the, the consumer's product, uh, they tend to fulfill or to satisfy the personal needs that you, we have as uh, human beings. But for the business, uh, the business product, they are, the, they are there to enhance uh, and to enable businesses to run very smoothly in their day-to-day -day activities. And uh, there are different categories of uh, consumer products. And number one is the convenience goods. And uh, with the convenience goods, they are goods that are not very expensive. And apart from them not being very expensive, they are goods that are frequently purchased and a part of these are purchasing you find that uh, the purchaser or the buyer the consumers uh, don't have to to think a lot whenever they are making a purchase they don't have even to make a lot of effort when it comes to purchasing these uh, products we have a very good example we don't have to think a lot in the morning whether we will buy a packet of milk it's so obvious it's a personal need that we it's a personal need that is very it's a personal it's a good that is very essential to us and also apart uh, from that you find that it's not that expensive and even we don't need a lot of effort to buy a packet of milk another example is like bread it's so obvious even you don't uh, think a lot whether to buy a bread or not because you find it's a product that is not even expensive and it's uh, frequently bought by different people and also you don't have to make a lot of effort to buy uh, the product to continue with there is the shopping products and uh, you find that these are just products or even items uh, that uh, buyers or consumers are willing to expend uh, considerable effort in planning and making the purchase and you find that uh, the purchasers or the buyers uh, spend much time comparing scores brand with respect to prices 
product feature, qualities, services, and perhaps warranty. And this is a, a very good example. We have uh, phones. You find that uh, phones are just products that we are willing uh, to buy. Uh, you really want to have a phone for the purposes of communication or even for the purposes of uh, uh, other needs that you want to fulfill. And you find that you even spend time uh, comparing one, uh, one uh, product to the other, or uh, one type of a phone to, to the other, in terms of brand, in terms of prices, in terms of colors, in terms of features and qualities and the services that this phone can offer. And this is a shopping product. Also, there is a speciality speciality products and these are these are types of products that possess, possesses or have one or more unique characteristics and buyers are willing to expend considerable effort to obtain them and you find that uh, the buyers actually plan the purchase of the product uh, earlier in advance and uh, will not accept a uh, substitute searching for product. Uh, these are just a product with unique characteristics. And apart from them having unique characteristics, you find that uh, buyers are willing even to, to make efforts to buy their product. And a very good example is like cars. You find that uh, you'll have to plan earlier in advance for you to purchase a, a car. You even have to look at uh, different uh, features and characteristics. And you even have uh, to move from one one place to another looking for a car that uh, really fits you and when you're given a substitute you really don't want uh, the substitute because you have already made in your mind that you want that product and you had uh, done enough research and even you had uh, tried to save or even to have enough money to purchase uh, your brand or the car that you want the other type of uh, consumer product is the unsought product and you find that uh, these are just products that are a p different consumers that don't plan earlier in advance to purchase them and they usually purchase this product whenever there is a problem when a problem that uh, requires uh, you to purchase that uh, product arises. For example, the, the medicine, uh, the painkillers, uh, it's not something that you plan earlier in advance. It's not something that you you, uh, you just purchase anyhow. It, you tend to purchase it when you have a problem that needs to be sorted or to be solved using the, the painkillers. Uh, other, other, or, or even the medical services and uh, automobile parts are uh, also uh, other examples, you, you don't uh, plan earlier in advance that you need uh, a mechanic. You start uh, planning like today I need a mechanic. Sometimes we tend to go for mechanic services uh, whenever, uh, whenever we, we have a problem that we want to handle at that moment. And therefore these are unsought product, uh, products. You just buy them or even purchase them or even uh, require them when a problem that uh, requires them arises. There is also the categories of business product and uh, you find that uh, business uh, product have been categorized into seven categories and number one is the installations and installation they just include the facilities, the office buildings, uh, the factories and also the warehouse and also the major equipment uh, that are not portable in, uh, in an institution and they are there to enhance uh, the production of a given organization or even institution. And you find that marketers tend to market even for installations. Others will, uh, examples of uh, installation is the generators that are used in the in different industries. You find this is not something that uh, is uh, mo it's, uh, moved in the evening and uh, taken back in the morning. You find that it's uh, fully fixed in a given area. A building, you find that it's uh, fixed in a in an area and it's not even portable but you find that uh, these installations are there to enhance uh, their production of a given institution and you find also marketers tend to market uh, installations uh, they'll market for generators they'll market for machines uh, they live and market for buildings offices uh, that are in different uh, buildings they also market for 
uh, for different uh, location for the purposes of uh, if you need a warehouse or even to, to start a factory, maybe there is a building somewhere that uh, is uh, vacant and therefore marketers can as well market for this. There is also the accessory equipment and this uh, does not uh, become part of uh, the final product but they are used to enhance our uh, production and therefore they are goods that are used to enhance production but they are not part of the final product and we have a very good example like the file cabinet we need uh, file cabinets in the office but uh, these file cabinets are not uh, a part of the final product even if uh, an institution or even an organization like uh, like safaricom they have different uh, final they have different file cabinets where they are filing different files their cabinets are not a uh, part of the final services that they give even if uh, ilara company have a uh, different uh, cabinets uh, for uh, for different file cabinets in their offices. We don't see just a portion of the cabinet in the product that is usually marketed in the market. Also calculators, they are used in the different offices, but you find that they are not a part of the final product. And for these are just the accessory equipment. We also have the raw materials. And with the raw materials, they are just the natural or the basic natural materials that actually becomes or they are part of the final product. And these uh, includes uh, the chemicals that is used in different uh, organizations or even in different um, industries. They are mixed together for the purposes of having the final product or even the agricultural products. They are purchased and they become part of the final product uh, like uh, you find like uh, offices that uh, or even industries that uh, manufactures drugs they'll mix uh, several chemicals the chlorine the hydrochlorine and uh, at the end of it all they'll have uh, uh, a final product that consists the ingredients of whatever was there raw materials and uh, to proceed we have another uh, another uh, category of uh, business product and this is the components part and uh, with the components part these are just physical product uh, and uh, they are joined together for the purposes of having a final product these are not the raw materials but they are components different components different parts of uh, different parts uh, that are more of a physical and they are joined together in order to have a final product for example those are uh, organizations or even companies that uh, deals with uh, vehicles or even uh, gadgets uh, like computers you find that they'll have different uh, parts that are joined uh, together for the purposes of having a final product maybe they'll have uh, the uh, different screens, they'll have even uh, wheels, they'll have engines and the, these parts will be connected together for the purposes of having a final product. Also we have another, another category of uh, business uh, product, we have the MRO supplies and the MRO supplies stands for the maintenance, repair and uh, operating uh, items and uh, you find that these maintenance uh, repair and operating supplies uh, they facilitate the productions and also the operations uh, of an institution and uh, you find that they are used for the purposes of enhancing the operations of uh, different gadgets that are in an institution or even an organization and they are marketed a very good example the screwdrivers they are not part of the final product but they are used for the purposes of uh, repairing uh, another example the oils they are used for the purposes of repairing different machines and different uh, gadgets but they are not uh, part of the final product the cleaning agents may be a given uh, a given equipment or even a machine that needs to be cleaned these are uh, cleaning reagents or agents you find that they're not part of the final product but uh, they are used for the purposes of maintaining repairing and operating the products that are in the institution or 
the machines and the gadgets that are there. Also the uh, business services and this is the seventh category of the uh, of the the seventh category of the business uh, product and uh, the business services uh, you find that uh, they are intangible products in, uh, in they, they are intangible products that are used by many organizations uh, in the uh, operations you find like an organization will require financial services and therefore they will go for uh, these services in uh, banks or even from owners and donors. Also, apart from that, you, you may find a company requires uh, services from lawyers or even from medics. But you find that uh, these services are there to enhance the normal operations and also to enhance the production that is in the institution. And uh, you find that some um, uh, firms or some organizations, uh, they have their uh, own uh, business services but for others they outsource these services for example you find an institution need uh, technicians they may outsource for their technicians and others have their uh, own technicians within their organizations and therefore the business services is uh, the seventh uh, category and it falls in the business product and uh, the consumer products and the business products can also be marketed using the, the different channels of communication. They can be marketed using television. They can be marketed using the print media. They can be marketed using new technology. And uh, therefore, it's always good to understand the products that you are, adv you are marketing. And also, apart from that, you understand the target audience for the purposes of positioning your product well. Remember, they are competitors. And uh, to conclude, you will find that uh, the uh, the customers or the consumers uh, or the target market that you have in mind, uh, they tend to look for the products that are unique. And therefore, it's always good to, uh, to position your product well in terms of the quality, in terms of the, uh, the price, in terms of the services, so that it can outstand or even outshine in the society or such that people will remain loyal to your product uh, due to how you have positioned it. And that brings us to the end of our lesson today. It was nice having you. Thank you for listening and also for following up. May the Lord do you good. Thank you. These televised lectures supplement our robust online learning going on on our MKU online platform. You can view more on our televised lectures via our online platform. We are in a digital era, and Mount Kenya University knows this. The following are the steps to follow so as to complete your online application. Download the application form from the website www.mku.ac.ke. Attach copies of your academic certificates and ID. Pay the application fees via M-Pesa pay bill number 270988. Your ID is the account number. 2,000 shillings is the charge for a postgraduate. You can also deposit in the bank accounts provided on the website. Then, email all the above to apply at mku.ac.ke.